a great to be here. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Appreciate your time here listening to us at KHTS Radio AM and the Doggy Director Facebook Live Feed. Um, Today, I just want to quick recap a couple things about last week. You can always watch the shows later on the Doggy Director at Facebook. I want to talk about... we t- um, the woman who had the question about her dog destroying the, her house all day, so we went over destructive chewing. The one thing I forgot to mention was, in conjunction, I had told her to get the long leg bone, because a lot of behavioral problems, including uh, chewing, can be boredom. Uh, so the long leg bone, the femur bone, I recommended, along with sea kelp, in case the dog has some kind of physiological imbalance. And I also told her about how to set up the situation and come back and catch the dog in the act. But I also wanted to let you know to incorporate bitter apple. It's a spray you can buy. It's uh, non-toxic. It's safe for pets. So if you find your dog going back to a lot of the same objects and chewing them, you can always use the bitter apple and incorporate it with the other program and do all four things together to help any destructive chewing and if that's an issue you're dealing with with your dog like i said you can go back on the doggy director at facebook and look up uh, last week's show and i hope it helps you and some people um today i wanted to talk to about one specific behavioral problem um, first of all what we call behavioral problems you got to realize is a dog's natural behavior all right, we bring them into our lifestyles, our lives. So all this chewing, jumping on people, and the, the uh, topic we're going to deal with today is actually natural behavior um, for a dog. It becomes a behavioral problem because we're making them adjust to our lives and our lifestyle. Um, so today I'm going to deal with one of the most common behavioral problems I deal with with a lot of people, and it's also... One that's hard for a lot of men to, you know, have an outsider come help them with because, you know, everyone has a dog and at times it can be difficult, but I'm going to show you how to make this behavioral problem really easy to deal with. And we're going to talk about housebreaking, housebreaking the puppy and the adult dog. It can apply to both. You'll slightly adjust some things depending whether you have an adult dog that's reverted or never been in the house compared to a puppy. And I uh, will touch upon area breaking, which means your dog sticks to one place in the yard and goes when he does go. So first of all, the main thing about house breaking you've got to realize, this is, I can't stress this enough, half the battle of house breaking is not giving them the chance to go in the house. And uh, what I mean by that, let's see, not give them the chance to go in the house. Well, how is that possible? Well, at first, you're going to monitor them when they're inside. All right? You're going to always keep them in your sight. If that entails closing bedroom doors, if it entails putting a leash on them while you're online doing stuff, doing the chores, patting your leg, keeping them following you, or putting a leash, wrap it around your wrist. You know, put it around your belt loop. It's better they are in the house three hours a day and never going than being in eight, ten hours a day and going in the house. So you got to realize every time a dog goes to the bathroom in the house, you're setting them back. Every time they're in the house and they're not going, you're moving forward. All right? So every accident is a setback. You're going to keep the dog in your sight at first. You can housebreak a dog in a week to two weeks if you utilize everything I'm going to tell you. Um, so what does it mean, not giving them the chance? Part of them, keeping, besides keeping them in your sight, is constantly take your dog out at first. If you don't have time to do this with a dog you really, and you want them housebroken, you really shouldn't have a dog. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. After they nap. You're going to have to take them out, a puppy. After they, after they play a little bit, they're going to have to go. All right? After they drink water, they're going to have to go out. So you're constantly teaching a puppy and spending the time with them. And you, if you don't have that time, it's really hard to housebreak. So it, I know it's work, it's time, but hopefully it's only, like I said, the first couple of weeks. You're putting in the extra effort, just like if you had a baby. All right, it takes time, it takes work and energy. 
Um, so if you don't have that time to dedicate to a dog and you really want them housebroken, maybe you want to consider a cat and a litter box or some other kind of pet. Um, you know, any uh, anything else that doesn't require so much time emotionally and physically needy as a dog is. Um, so you're going to keep them in your sight. You're going to constantly take them out. All right? That's half the battle. Now you tell me, well, my dog's already been going in the house. It reverted. It used to be okay. Now it's going. Well, you've got to start back to the basics again. I want you to clean up your rugs wherever they've gone. Um, you, besides a professional shampooer, there's a lot of products, but I prefer vinegar. I mean, I've used that a long time, and if you get apple cider vinegar with the mother, it has enzymes to break down bacteria. So good old-fashioned vinegar is all you really need to clean up the spot good. And start fresh. Make sure the dog doesn't smell anywhere he's gone before, if that's the case. With a new puppy, you're not going to... Let them out of your sight to start with. If you can't watch your dog or keep him in your sight, that means he's in the backyard. He's being confined in a dog run. If you're using crates properly, meaning you've got your dog used to the crate on a separate training sessions where it's shorter, uh, rather you start short and you're building up him being used to the crate longer and longer you're giving him treats in the crate you're feeding him in the crate and teaching him he comes out after a few minutes and like I said you're building up the time in that he's in that crate and you get him adjusted to where he likes and is comfortable with the crate if not use a dog run keep him outside but always have him in your sight to start with so now what's going to happen your dog's always with you he's on your sight so you're going to be able to catch him in the act now, the one thing I want to go back to, and I forgot to mention, is so you're taking your dog out all the time. You're not giving him the chance. You're keeping him in your sight. When you go out with him, I want you to really make a big deal and really praise him. Get real animated. Over-exaggerate the praise when he does go outside. Okay? Just as negative uh, corrections and strong negative corrections as shock collars, prong collars, these leave a long-lasting negative impression on your dog. So does the opposite, praise. The more praise and getting really super crazy animated with your praise and making a big deal out of your dog just going uh, pee-pee or poo outside, that's going to leave a, more of an impression and longer-lasting impression on him and will help teach him quicker. All right, so you're going to make a big deal out of it when he does go out. So now you've got him in, in your sight. The first time he tries, you're there to correct him in the act. It doesn't do any good not to correct uh, to correct later. You know, the average adult dog forgets their own actions two minutes after they do them. So with a puppy, you can imagine, hell, you know, listen, dogs live for the minute. So you can imagine with a puppy, hey, they've gone. They're on to something else right after they go. They're not even thinking about that they just went to the bathroom. So you only correct them when you catch them in the act. Otherwise, you're going to do more harm to the whole housebreaking um, situation. So that old school, call them to it, rub their nose in it. No, no, you don't want to do that. Now think about that. You're calling your dog to where he went to the bathroom. He went, whatever, two, three, four minutes ago. All right? So what's that dog going to associate? Just coming to you with the correction. All right? He knows dad's face is angry. I came to him and I got corrected or I got my nose rubbed in it. So he's just associating coming with you, your expression on your face that you're upset. I'll have people that tell me, Steve, I swear he knows he's guilty. I come home and he's scared and there's poop everywhere. No, he's not maybe even associating that he went to the bathroom. He's associating when you come home through that door, sometimes you're mad and angry. He associates that look on your face, you're mad and angry. He associates everything um, that he's scared of and negative except for going to the bathroom in the house because, you know, he's been corrected too late after the fact. You come home, you find it, you get mad. That's all he knows. So it's very important to only correct him when you catch him in the act. So you got him in your sight the first time they try. I want you to use just a loud vocal correction for now to correct your dog when he goes. All right, uh, I'm going to do a whole show on different corrections and the difference between correction and punishment. I'm going to go into how psychological corrections, the way I train, is more effective than, let's say, more painful or physical type corrections. All right, you can make a dog uh, respect the word ah 
or no without ever being real physical or physical with them at all so or harsh with them so it's more about psychological corrections um, we're going to come back to this topic of a house breaking we're getting ready to take a commercial break but remember never ever hit your dog never correct your dog out of anger use it as a teaching tool so here we're going to our sponsors stay with us thank you Did you see that car? Isn't it the best? A moving advertisement. Command eye-catching attention with the vehicle wrap by Feathers. Feathers can turn your company vehicles into a cost-effective moving billboard. Their high-quality, high-resolution vehicle wraps deliver excellent marketing exposure. Feathers works closely with you to clearly display your message. Whether it's for branding of a new product, increasing name recognition, or promoting an event, Feathers Vehicle Wraps gets the job done. Feathers on Soledad and Canyon Country across from Edwards Theaters. First impressions say it all. Choosing the right makeup is critical to that first impression and keeping your skin looking young and healthy. That's why Santa Clarita's Jen Gerard created Gerard Cosmetics. Inspired by women of all ages who gravitate toward classic and timeless beauty with a modern twist, Gerard Cosmetics. Superb quality and pigmentation, along with lip glosses and lipsticks in colors for everyone. The internationally acclaimed Gerard Cosmetics. Discover your new look at GerardCosmetics.com. Com. Do you like to rock across Africa? Then the wait is over. Africa rocks! Africa's greatest hits is now available at the San Diego Zoo! And who could forget 99 red baboons? <laughs> or the African crested porcupine smash hit? I got quills to pay the bills! Hey, don't get too close. And the hits keep on coming. Africa Rocks has all your favorites from six different African habitats. Hungry like a leopard. Ibex is bad. Harder, better, fossa stronger. And a new track from Kendrick Lieber. Now, Larry. Yes, Chuck? A collection of this magnitude, I'd fly to Africa. <laughs> well, don't pack your bags, friend. Africa Rocks is only available right here at the San Diego Zoo. Wow, that really does rock. No, it Africa Rocks. Welcome to Africa Rocks. Experience six different African habitats, including our first ever aquatic enclosure with African penguins. Only at the San Diego Zoo. I listen to it all day, every day. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome back to the Doggy Director with canine master Stephen Ritt. Stephen is well known for training animals you see in many movies and sitcoms. Stephen is the creator of The Ritt Way, a training method that works by applying loving and time-tested techniques for a more enjoyable training experience. Lines are open. You can call Stephen at 661-298-5487 at 661-298-5487. You can listen live online at hometownstation.com. And now, Stephen Ritt, your dog's best friend. All right, we're back. I'm Stephen Ritt, the Doggy Director. Uh, for any questions, you can call us here at the station at 661-298-5487. And we're talking about housebreaking today because I did want to get some of these real common behavioral problems and issues people deal with that need help, uh, where you can always are, uh, you know you can always look back at them in archives so I just want to put a few of these in the can to help people um, that do have particular issues and hopefully we'll help them and their dog cure these issues and you'll learn how to su be successful at dealing with them by watching just uh, one episode so today it's housebreaking I think before the break we were talking about the difference between correction and punishment and how the one time when you finally do catch your dog in the act, I want you to be real vocal. I want you to be loud. The loudest correction should be in the beginning of training, and then if you're consistent, you'll get the same response as you did saying it loud, only with softer vocal corrections. But you've got to start loud to work your way down where your dog is sensitive to quieter correct types of corrections, vocal corrections. So once you catch your dog, for now, I want you to act. Just like I was really telling you to really make a big deal out of praising your dog when they do go outside and over-exaggerate it, I want you to sound upset. I, wa I want you to be loud so your dog isn't thinking it's, 
you know, whatever's coming out of your mouth is still okay and that everything's fine. I want a distinct separation in your voice infliction, all right? Where well, your dog definitely knows it was something negative directed at him with just your voice. Then down the road, like I said, we can lighten up with our corrections, but it'll have the same meaning to your dog. So it's more of a psychological correction than any kind of pain or physical correction. So I want you to immediately take your dog out after you catch him in the act because it's the first time you've always kept him in your sight. You're constantly taking him out after he drinks, after he naps, all right, after he plays. So you're not giving him a chance to go in the house. That's the biggest, most important piece of advice. Don't give them the chance. They're always in your sight when you can't watch them. They're in a, outside in the yard. They're in a dog run and if properly acclimated to a, a crate, the right size, larger crate. So the dog's in your sight. You catch them for the first time. You're going to give them a loud vocal correction. Now here's where a lot of people make a mistake too. They make going out negative. They're still mad at their dog or they're dragging it out by the collar or they're yelling at it. Going outside should be a positive. Remember we talked about how a puppy forgets its own actions right after they do them? All right. So your puppy's not even associating all this anger and, towards him with him going in the house. Now you're on to something else. He's associating it with you calling him outside, with you grabbing him by the collar. So remember, make going outside positive. That's what you want him to do, right? Going out's good. So after you initially correct him for going in the house, make going outside a positive experience. Go all the way out with your dog. Wait for him to finish going and make sure you give him a lot of praise. So now that you've kept him in your sight, you've gone out with him, and you should have time. When you get a new dog, you should have time to housebreak him. You should be able to take the time to go out with him constantly, constantly take him out and praise him. When you can't, you have to keep him somewhere when you're unable to watch him. So let him, let him only have the run of the house when you're able to watch him. Close bedroom doors. Close, uh, use puppy gates so he can't go upstairs. You know, you give him a smaller portion of the house before you give him the whole house. If you live in a 5,000 square foot house, and your puppy can go anywhere. It's, obviously, it's going to be real hard to watch them. So use these children's gates, puppy gates, block off stairways, block off different areas in the other rooms if you have to, to help it, you be able to keep an eye on them and not give them. And then, you know, it's like let him earn the freedom of more of the house once he's proven he's housebroken in one area. You also have to make sure your dog's on a good diet. All right, consistent timing too. A good diet, your dog will have good firm stools. If your dog's dealing with stomach issues, the runs is going to be harder to housebreak them, obviously, right? And, and much more of a mess. So besides a great diet, you want to keep the schedule of approximate times the same. If your dog's going to the bathroom or urinating overnight, maybe for now, don't feed him or let him drink water late at night. Cut it back. Start learning your dog's habits of digestion. Where how long after he eats does he go to the bathroom? Every dog's different. All right. Some dogs process, digest food quicker. So get in the habit of knowing how often um, your dog goes, when he goes, to help assert and assess when you need to take your dog out, and that'll help you down the road too. But for now, after he naps sleeps he's going to have to go after he drinks water he's going to have to go after they play so you're constantly taking him out just in the beginning so every time your dog goes to the bathroom it's only outside he's getting a ton of praise you're over exaggerating the first time or two he tries in the house he's in your sight for you to catch him and you're going to give him that loud vocal correction you're not going to continue yelling you're not going to do anything but one sharp vocal correction. You're going to act and make it loud and make it seem serious just at that moment. After that, the damage is done. Going outside, you're going to praise him. And when he's outside continuing relieving himself, you're going to praise him. You're never going to correct your dog out of anger. I know people get frustrated, but the correction is a teaching tool. Okay, you give corrections out of teaching. You're going to sound intense, but it's 
out of, uh, you know, love. It, you're never going to correct out of anger. It's to teach them as quick as possible so you can move on and get through whatever it is you're trying to teach them. You know, don't worry about yelling at your dog or being, you know, uh, criticized for that. You know, by the neighbor, you know, he might hear you yell at your dog. So what? Maybe he's quietly hitting his dog. I don't know. But don't worry about that. All right? This is just your voice. It's okay. Because I want your dog to definitely know right when you say that word at that moment he's doing it wrong. And you're going to use the same consistency whether it's jumping on people, getting in the trash. You're going to get him used to one correction. All right? After he gets off the person, he's good. After he gets his nose away from the trash, he's good. So you got to know how dogs think, how they live for the moment. So all your training techniques and how you interact with your dog is knowing that the dog is just thinking of the moment and he's in the moment. Um, I'm going to try to quick wrap this up. Um, watch your dog always in the house at first and keep him in your sight. Praise him a lot. Never let them go to the bathroom in the house because you're constantly taking them out. That is really half the battle of housebreaking. We have to leave you now. Thank you for joining us today. I sure appreciate it. We're here at KHTS Saturdays at 11 a.m. with the Doggy Director every weekend. And you can see us at the Doggy Director on Facebook. Everyone have a blessed day and remember... Patience and love will teach your dog a lot quicker and never, ever hit your dog.